Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. And in today's video, I'm going to show you my little afternoon trip to um, St. Louis Square, somewhere around Sherbrooke Metro Station in Montreal. It was my first time here, and this place is another squirrel paradise. So I'm able to spot like almost 10 squirrels around me in the same moment. They're all munching on something. And it's a bright, beautiful, sunny day. I love these uh, shadows on the, on the ground. And in the distance, there is the fountain. It looks beautiful. So I'm going to walk closer to it. A lot of people are like sitting and chilling around this area. It's a beautiful fountain. And the house is behind. So now I'm ready to sketch the view in front of me. And today, I'm going to try a new pen. It's a Faber-Castell brand Pit Artist Pen. Dark sepia. The tip side is around 0.5 or medium. Okay, so here is a view in front of me. It's so inspiring. And it's probably my first time sketching a fountain. So as you can see, I'm beginning with the top, the cup of the fountain, and starting to connect the, uh, the, middle, the middle part. Um, just a bunch of different shapes in cylinders and in a dish or bowl shapes and adding these uh, quick florals, carvings around the edges. Yeah, just adding, you know, enough lines to show the carving on the, uh, on the stone, the stone part of, of the fountain and keep moving on to the lower part. Yeah, this part is also like a pretty tall cylinder with carvings looping around and keep connecting. So when drawing pretty pretty much anything, it's good to start from the top and gradually uh, connecting the shapes and lines around the middle and the lower part. This is the base of the fountain. It's kind of like a prism or a cube shape. And there's a little bird, or I, I think it's a pigeon, landing on the top of the fountain. And now I'm using very gentle pressure to show the flowing water all around the top of the fountain. Yeah, very gentle and loose lines. And same for here, dripping down uh, the dish in the middle. And adding a little bit hatching lines to show the three dimension of the base. And now I am starting to make this very long line uh, that wraps around the little pole. This is the edge of the pole. This is the, uh, the top of the water line. Yeah, and now I am starting to add a bit of uh, ripples. And after that, I'm beginning to add people. Just adding this one man over here because these people are in the distance. They are looking very tiny and adding human figures are very important to show the sizes and proportions of uh, the objects in an environment. Okay, so when drawing uh, like an, a nature landscape or an urban landscape, I always like to include at least one or two people. It just makes this uh, fountain look so much more bigger than it seems. It's actually a pretty big fountain. Yeah, and I, I just added uh, like a bike for the lady. So the, the, the lady and the guy, they're walk, walking closer to, to each other, forming a kind of narrative. And now I'm adding these lines to show the bushes, the form of foliages on top of the brim of the pole. Adding some more people in the even further distance. Yeah, so those people in the distance, they are looking almost like ants because of how big they look like. They are pretty far away um, in relationship to the fountain. They do look like ants. Yeah. And so now I'm starting to build up this lamp on the very left side to have another like interest point to give a little more balance to this um, imagery, not just the fountain. Yeah, the fountain's on the right and this lamp on the left. And now I'm starting to add 
uh, the tree branches that I see very loosely because most of the uh, branches are being covered by the uh, orange yellow foliages. And now I'm switching to another uh, Faber Castell brand pit artist pen. This one is, I think it's a lighter brown uh, fine liner pen, medium tip still. And just really relaxing my hands, almost using a blind contour approach to draw the outlines of these trees and, and just filling in the inside with as much uh, squiggly lines to show the texture of leaves as I can. And same for this tree here, close to the fountain. And this is like probably like several trees merging together. Yeah. Just focusing on the outline, and yeah, this is probably like at least two or three trees merging together. Yeah, so for these textural lines to show the definition of leaves, I'm just relaxing. I'm not trying to copy or like staring at the trees in front of me so much. This is not like a, a super uh, physically accurate rendering of, of what's there. It's kind of like my very quick summary or, or reaction to what I see. Okay, so now I think that's pretty much it for now for, for the foliage details. And now I'm starting to add those smaller details in between behind these trees. So I'm really aware of the, the depths of field or the sense of space. There are layers of objects in this scenery. The closest object is the, the fountain and the water underneath it and then uh, the trees in the middle ground and uh, this row of houses behind. So about three layers, starting to draw uh, the rooftop area of these heritage buildings, very cool. And starting to draw these attic details, the little windows, like little bird houses. And start, you know, just keep building up the lines underneath the attic. Yeah, this is a pretty tall attic window. So the process of drawing is takes a lot of concentration. So I am really focusing on a moment and following what I see, the shape next to the one that I just drew. So it's just easier. All you need is to come down and start concentrating you know, on a moment and not just looking around and get get distracted. So that's why I prefer, you know, going out on sketch trips by myself because if I'm with friends, it's very challenging to focus on the sketching process. And just going to keep adding some more little uh, birdhouse shapes for the attic area. And I, I like to fill in those window inside the frame area with solid black ink. So it simply adds a sense of three dimension to the houses. So there's a bit of depth with just this simple decision of coloring in the windows with solid black shapes. And now I'm starting to draw this tree behind the houses and adding some details. A lot of these details are pretty abstract, just the lower part of the houses. And this is actually the building on the corner of the street, very far away. This is the deepest uh, depths of field here. And adding some final details especially around the middle. I like to put a lot of details around the middle of a picture uh, because it really requires a lot of uh, attention point. Yeah, that's it. So here's a look of my finished line work. So you know you gotta stop drawing when the amount of details is just right. We don't want to add way too much details. I don't like to do too much hatching and cross hatching work with my ink pen. So now I'm ready to, I'm painting watercolors now. So always starting with the sky. So this is a very light diluted wash of cerulean blue, a bit of ultramarine blue on top because the higher part of the sky is of a darker tone of blue. Yeah, and I'm actually saving those brush strokes. It gives a sense of fluidity to the flow of air in the sky. The sky is never flat. It's always free flowing, uh, turbulating. 
And now I'm adding the first layer for these houses. You know, the, the color of the sunshine is reflecting on the exterior of these houses on the bright sunny day. And um, this light yellow wash is really helps to establish the atmosphere of a sunny day. So adding the oranges around those rooftop areas that I sense. And also for this building in a corner of the street in a very far distance. Yeah, so I always like to start with uh, the warm colors uh, for the first layer, except the sky. Yeah. And just adding this warm yellow. It's like lemon yellow mixed with cadmium yellow. And starting to lay down the first layer for the trees. And a bit of orange mix in. Orange mixed with a tiny bit of lime green. Okay, it's a really uh, like subtle color. Yeah, and some more orange. As you can see, I'm using very quick dashes of brush strokes. So it's helpful to kind of pre-wet uh, these areas that you're about to paint with a little bit of clear water so you don't end up with like so many harsh brush strokes. So we do need um, a bit of uh, brush strokes to show relief, especially for trees. So um, you don't have to try so hard to make every single brush stroke, you know, flatten down, looking flat on a paper. Uh, for when painting trees, it's actually good, you know, to show your to show your brush strokes. Now these are like patches of oranges for this uh, cluster of trees on the left of the fountain, and um, orange mixed in with a bit of lime green more or less lime green. Just play around with the different ratios of colors according to my observation. So painting trees is actually very relaxing because you're trying to uh, punch on your impressions. You're not trying to capture every single leaf that's on a tree, right? That's too much. It's gonna uh, waste you too much energy. So just focus on impressions and not the physical accuracy. So now I'm just using the leftover residue of the uh, the yellow green uh, pen to for the first layer of the water surface and wet into wet a bit of turquoise to show the effect of ripples or splashing water. Yeah, again, painting very loosely for this second layer for now. I'm gonna add fine liner details later to show the ripples even sharper. And now it's time to give contrast for these foliages. So this um, second layer, I think, for these trees are, um, in general, is a mix of viridian green with a little bit of burnt sienna or brown. Okay, and also because I'm using a water brush, there's a tiny bit of water, you know, leaking down the brush tip. So every single brush stroke is of a slightly different tone of this uh, medium dark green. The water, the amount of water on the brush is, is giving like a huge effect um, to the tone that we are punching onto the paper. Even though we're using the same color, the amount, of more, the amount of water is actually slightly different in every single brush stroke. Yeah, just punching this one loosely. I think this is still wet into wet. Okay. And this time, the, uh, the mid and darker tones for this tree is actually everywhere. Um, so the, uh, the darkest tones for a tree is not always around the lower or the bottom. It really depends on the lighting condition and the location. Okay, so just following my observation, punching on these bits of red oranges here and there, these little spots. And painting becomes so much more easier and relaxing once you let go of judgment. So a lot of times people are judging uh, the thing we can't really make it perfect. Okay, a lot of times people are judging about the physical accuracy of the outlines and the, the colors. So to be honest, 
Okay, so my painting, my drawing and painting is not exactly the same as the view in front of me. I am only creating a response or my impression of what I see and not a physical uh, likeness copy. Okay, I'm just punching on these uh, red oranges containing less water compared to the previous layer. Yeah, so that's, that's that for now for that tree. And again, adding these mid to dark green tones, mostly viridian green. Mix in with a little bit burnt sienna. Here and there. Really nice blend of colors. And when I'm punching on these brush strokes, they're not just random dots. So I am actually looking and feeling how these leaves are draping down from uh, this huge cluster, okay? So they're, they're maybe laying in slight different directions. They're all draping down. So they're not just like random dots. That contains my interaction, okay, of seeing these leaves. And it really helps you when you're painting these from real life observations. So if you're working um, from reference photos, these leaf textures might be flattened. So it's hard to tell how they are uh, draping down in which direction. So yeah, real love observation, you can see and sense so much more. Yeah, so now it's time to add a little bit gray shadows around the bottom, also around the rooftop area of the houses. Over here, my trio of colors, blue, green, magenta, to get my own gray. And now I'm starting to add these sharper rings of ripples. This is like a turquoise green. This is like a reflection of the foliage color above. And I'm doing this when the previous layer is pretty much all dried. So these brush strokes are sharp and crisp, just the way that I want. So if you want soft blending, then don't wait too long. Uh, if you want really crisp lines, then you have to wait longer. But depending on what, on what kind of effect that you want with watercolors, the waiting time it should be shorter or longer, depending on the effect that you want. So this is like wet on to dry. Yeah, adding a bit of shadow around the brim of the pool. Yeah, so now I think the uh, the colors or the definitions for the foliages are done. Now we're moving on to these minor details. Okay, a little bit more uh, color and contrast for the lower part. The sketch. Some greens for the bushes, and grays for the uh, the carving of the fountain. Over here, as you can see, I'm just leaving little little streaks to show uh, like the, the water flowing around it, okay? And also to show the shine. Yeah, same gray for the base. Just uh, focusing a lot of shade, shade color on the left side because I think the sun is on the right side. Yeah, adding a little bit of uh, the tint of oranges and reds for the reflection on the surface of the water. Yeah, some browns for the uh, tree trunks. And for these bit of abstract structures around the bottom of the houses. Yeah, so when we are drawing and painting, we don't have to be so specific of what we are really trying to depict. Um, you know, some details could be a little bit blurry and just leave room for, for the people, for the viewer to imagine. And adding these dark brown, you can use raw umber to paint uh, the thin branches and twigs. Yeah, so now I see I need a little bit more weight or shade for this upper part of the, uh, the tree here. Yeah, it's again, very thin green with a bit of uh, brown mix in. A little bit more contrast around this part of the fountain. Yeah, almost little dots here and there. So 
give like a stronger sense of a tension point here and there. Yeah, a little bit for the lamp. That's it. So here is the look of my finished sketch. It took me about one hour on location. So thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. So I update this channel two to three times a week. See you next time, everyone.